realize that you got a little bit of left hip issues. You also at the same time have some issues with your shoulder, uh, left shoulder just so happens, uh, some suboccipital areas as well, just going through your history and whatnot, okay? But uh, what we're going to take a look at right now is we're going to kind of uh, review your x-ray films just so you have a little bit better idea of what it is that we're looking at. Um, you know, I, I always start with, you know, the very obvious things. And uh, the one thing in particular is that overall you seem like you're a very nice girl, but it's clear that your heart's in the wrong place. <laughs> I always love throwing that in there. So anyway, just teasing you. Um, as we go ahead and we look in through here, for the most part, there's, there, there's more balance than imbalance right here for the most part. Um, but there's some other things that shift you into a, a dynamic error as far as your, your body, your body position, okay? So if we go ahead and we take a look in through here, we'll start the center aspect there and look at your tailbone. What I see right through here in the tailbone is that I see that the tailbone is tipped down just a little bit on the right by about 1.5 degrees. There also is an axial rotation. So in other words, that means it's rotating posterior on the left-hand side, okay? So right out of the gate, there's a little bit of a twist right in through here. And I say that because when I go ahead and I take a look here at this lumbar spine in here, I can see that there's a little rotation going in this direction, which is counter to what I see here. Okay. So there's a bit of a twist right there, right out of the gate, okay? That's not one thing we want. The other thing is, is that, again, more good than bad, uh, overall, the femur heads are pretty close to the same height. The tops of your uh, iliums are also close to the same height also. Uh, one thing I do want to take note of even though all that looks fairly decent, is the size of these here. Those here kind of look like cat eyes just a little bit, right? So what that tells me is that your pelvis is leaning forward quite a bit, okay? So that there can cause a little bit of jamming, if you will, at the, at the lumbosacral joint where you have all this other stuff that's going on, the little bit of that rag twist, okay? So that in itself is a little bad. Uh, there's only, when you go and you look from top to bottom here, when we're looking at the pelvis in there, there's only like one millimeter difference. I mean, it's, you know, give or take a little bit. Uh, it's really not that bad. A 136 versus 133, three millimeters, that's not horrible either. But to kind of give you an idea of what the twist is, even though it's minor, there's, it still exists, okay? So uh, when we go ahead and we take a look at that, it's kind of like your pelvis is doing a little of this, and it's doing a little of this. While your tailbone is doing a little of this, and kicking back this way, which is opposite of this bunch of bones right in here. Again, for the most part, it doesn't look horrible, horrible, but there's just enough rotation, and so that in itself is problematic. Any questions on that? Did I make that kind of clear? I mean, that makes sense to you? Um, you know, we get in there, and, and listen, I, I know I treat you at, uh, you know, events and things along those lines, but boy, this is going to be so nice to dial in. I know, in. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, right? So the, the, the one thing is, is that as we go ahead and we look at uh, um, this here, we always go ahead and make sure that we have one at 90 degrees from the other side. So you always have to have two aspects of the film. You have to have the, uh, the, the posterior uh, interior aspect, and then also you have to have the, the side view as well. Now, as we look in through here, just to kind of make a little bit more sense of this, I'm going to go ahead and tilt this like you're lying on your back here, okay? because this is pretty significant. So this is you laying down, all righty, even though you were standing up when we took the x-rays. Right in through here is kind of the top of the mountain, right in through here, right? Okay, so this is number five, this is number four, this is number three, okay? Number three is supposed to be the top of the mountain, not four and five. So that tells me that you're, you're backwards quite a bit here. In other words, you tilt back an awful lot in through there, which is not great. So let's go ahead and bring you back upright Boom, just like that. Um, almost looks like you start to bow in there, but overall I'm not too worried about that. Uh, you do have a little bit of posteriority in through here. That can be significant. When we go ahead and we put the vertebrae in this position, I'm gonna move that nerve out of there and just put that just like that. So that's a little slop in the spine. A lot of uh, experts will go ahead and say that, that there's a first sign of some deterioration of the joint itself. Uh, as a whole, um, I'm just concerned because it's a little posterior and there's that twist. Okay, so we just want to try and minimize your risk to injuring that, and uh, so we'll go ahead and address that as well. Now, you can see there's hardly any bit of your pelvic on the, this portion, if you will, when we're looking at things from the side. We like to see this here all kind of be neutral, if you will, but you can see this is rotated this direction. There's not much right in through here. This angle right in here should be between 43 and 47 degrees. I'm, no, 43 and 47 degrees, yes, and you're at 37, okay? Mm -hmm. So a little bit shallow there, so that tells me that basically I want to really focus on trying to make the double AS move without 
significantly bothering that sacrum area there. Okay? So, any questions on that? Alrighty. So, it's not your first time to a chiropractor, so that helps, right? <laughs> so, as we go ahead, we go on up. We'll go ahead and go up in through your, uh, your thoracic range or your thorax in there, or in Spanish, your dorsal as the x-ray machine <laughs> trying to switch to us, right? So, no big deal. But we, we go ahead and we see that there is a, uh, a line in which everything's very, very flat right in through here. And then all of a sudden, you, you bend, boom, right in through here. But then again, return to being somewhat flat in some of these areas here. And so you have, uh, do you have a, any stress like between your shoulder blades right in there? Yeah. It's kind of interesting when you go ahead and you do this kind of thing, it shows that this is kind of like X marks the spot. And so what I want to try and do is uh, try and break this open, I guess, if you a little bit, try and increase some of the flexibility of your, uh, your thoracic spine. So we'll see how that goes. Um, not sure if there's uh, been a long-term hyperkyphosis there and that's changed some of the shape of the bones but it uh, could be kind of problematic for us, so we'll see. In uh, cases of scoliosis and things along those lines, uh, a lot of the surgeons will go ahead and say that uh, this, is, this can be really, really, really tight, hard to break open, okay? Now, with that being said, what else did I find? Well, clear at the top, and this is you from the other side, I see a nasty old bow right in through there, about 11 degrees, okay? Now, Typically, uh, when people talk about scoliosis in through there, it has to be 10 degrees or above, okay? Um, and there has to be rotation. Otherwise, then it's not scoliosis, okay? But in your case, you fit kind of both of those components, if you will, of curvature plus then a significant amount of rotation. And it starts clear up here. And then as we go ahead and we go one, two, three, four, three, four, um, that's kind of you know the, the two three four region in there. That's where things start to bow sideways pretty significantly, and that's pretty tight. And uh, it just so happens that you were just telling me that just a moment ago that you had other issues into your arms and your hands, right? Mm -hmm. Is it in your hands as well? Yeah. All righty. That there could actually be T4 syndrome. Okay. T4 syndrome is something that a lot a lot of doctors are quite aware of, um, but that can actually mimic, if you will, a disc issue in your neck or an upper thoracic issue in your, um, into your arms, if you will. So, um, kind of fascinating stuff. For the most part, I mean, you can also see that, you know, if I draw this line straight up and down in here, there's a little bit of a shift over and through here. So, um, we've got some work to do in trying to get you centered back into the, the middle there. So, when you're doing, you know, overhead presses and things along those lines, uh, it reduces your risk. But uh, the big thing for you is be very, very cautious about not bumping your chin with the log. Alrighty, because that could be, I know, right? And uh, that's so easy to do, isn't it? Alrighty, but uh, anyway, I went in there and I wrote down several of the, the directions, if you will. Of course, I always at, apply it right in through here in my notes, okay? So, any questions on those two views I just showed you? So, that's your thoracic range in there, okay? And, of course, that ties in with your rib cage. Now, as we go ahead and we come on up, um, oh, wow, look at that. This is the, uh, the timeout mechanism that uh, I really don't love. That means you All right, talk too take much. this here. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, so let's go ahead and come on up and through here. Okay, now the nice news, if you will, is that as I go ahead and I draw a line through here with the most central aspect there of the C2 bone, that actually is pretty straight. So your neck actually has recovered pretty well. Um, there's this thing called the riding mechanism, which is a uh, neurological event that happens with your eyes, so your body will go ahead and try and get the head level again. Um, you've actually done pretty well for the most part in regards to that. Uh, but you still have some compensatory uh, rotation and whatnot in through the uh, cervical spine. And you can see the little spinous processes in through here over on this side as opposed to dead on in the middle. Okay. So there's some things there that we need to work on. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and before I go to the lateral view, I'm going to go to the one with you with your mouth hanging open. Alrighty. Now the interesting thing is, is that what I'm doing is I'm measuring these two lateral masses in through here. And those should be equal if they are the same, uh, if there's no rotation. And basically the shape of that bone looks like this. It's the atlas. And so there's a little dish here and a little dish here for your, uh, your skull bone to sit on, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm measuring the size of that to determine the rotation. In this case, this is actually rotated anterior. Now, you'll see the R over here all the way up and down and through the spinal views. Um, what, basically, when a chiropractor looks at your film, we flip it to that of a medical doctor. And so that way, when we look at, your, at you, we're looking at you from the back, not necessarily the front, okay? 
So lines in through here aren't too bad. I mean, there should be some, uh, uh, there's a, just a little bit of an opening over and through here to give me a little bit of a listing so I know which direction to go ahead and push things. The big news of the day for you, though, however, is a couple things. One is, is that you see that little TP shape looking thing right there? Mm -hmm. That's your spinous process. You can feel that right there in the back of your neck, okay? There's a plumb line right there, or basically that's how you straighten the door and make sure a door frame is straight up and down. But anyway, we've done the same thing with your neck in through here, and you can see that you're 17.2 degrees off center. Alrighty? That could cause some troubles because there's some vascularity in through there. Uh, the vascularity comes out here, goes in through this range, and then forms one blood vessel, goes to the center of your brain. Kind of important, wouldn't you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we want to go ahead and make sure that that's you know, dialed in and, and exactly where it needs to be. So that's one major thing there. The second thing is, is that you might want to call your mom and dad because they were right. Your head is not on straight. Okay? I always throw that. So we're to start at the bottom, we go to the top, right? But uh, anyway, when you go ahead and you take a look in through here, you see the space here? Mm -hmm versus the space here, a lot of space over on this side. So basically what that tells me is that your head has slid this direction. Alrighty? Now, do you think that could cause some binding in the musculature in the back of your neck? Sure. Now, you've been getting, uh, uh, from a naturopath, you've been getting SOT, or not SOT, but uh, single occipital technique, right? Yeah. And so, how long have you been getting that done? About two and a half years. About two and a half years. I think we're on to something that can actually go ahead and make their job a little easier and also at the same time maybe reduce a lot of the symptoms that you've been having. Uh, do you have any clicking in the jaw too? Sometimes. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we may actually have to address your jaw during the adjustment phase too, from the outside, not from the inside, <laughs> okay? So, but uh, anyway, a lot of stuff going on right in through there. Um, not as much as is going on in your hair though. Yeah, that's hair <laughs> Okay, <my ears. laughs> all right, exactly. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at you from the side here, okay? And there should be a normal curve in your neck. And as you see, there's a curve in your neck, but it's anything but normal, all right? The curve should go this way. And so with an anterior curve, this bone should actually touch that line or be no more than five millimeters away. You're at 29.33, all right? And because this tilts, that C2 tilts down, that should be between zero and five degrees and you're at 15.5. So as we go ahead and we bring your head back and we push this forward, okay? What should happen is, is that this line will get a little closer to this, and then as this here starts to curve in normal, that line will get closer to that neutral line. Okay, so that's some of the goals that we have. Fortunately, even, even with all the hair and ear stuff that you have in there, I'm still able to go ahead and see all the anatomy, so that's a win for us. Alrighty. So um, with those three films, is there any question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like we've got a lot to do, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of crazy stuff. Right. <laughs> that, yeah, right? We're going to get your head on right. Um, now, with that, does that seem to kind of correlate with a lot of the symptoms that you've been dealing with? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like I always tell people, you know, just because a lot of doctors aren't able to go ahead and find a lot of the same things that I've discovered here today, doesn't mean the films don't have a, a purpose. It just means the doctors need to be a little bit better about interpreting them. Yeah. So we all, as chiropractors, we all need to be better at what we do. Wouldn't you agree? No, agree. I mean, that's why you drove for, what, an hour and a half to get here? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and we'll get that examination finished up here with you and uh, in the adjustment, okay? Sounds Is we're, we've already gone through all the x-rays, uh, we've gone through the examination process, all of that for you, okay? Pretty much understand what we're dealing with, right, for the most part. Nice thing is we've met before, so it's yeah. not a big deal, right? <laughs> but a uh, uh, table does go ahead and pop up and down, okay? We're using some physics to go ahead and make some things happen. Well, anytime you get on a chiropractic table, make sure you never ever reach around here and lean, because if you catch your fingers, that's really bad. I call that a monkey trap. That's how you catch monkeys. Did you know that? Well, where are they? Well, I know, right? I know. <laughs> There's no monkeys in Indiana. They're at the zoo. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and have you put your face in the hole here. Got a few more exam things to do here, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get in there and do the adjustment. Okay, kiddo? All righty then. Thanks for your patience. All right. Now, we already talked about the fact that your head isn't on straight, right? But do you feel this loose here? Feel how it's all bunched in through there on that right side? So that's a chronic thing. Go ahead and come in through there, and you feel, this is loose here, but as we go on that paraspinal, you feel how that's all tense on that right side in there? So we're going to go ahead and mark that down, intrinsic stuff. And then we come in through here, you feel that? Woo, this is even worse. It's like the whole trap's engaged over here. I don't yeah. like that. 
scalings. Ooh, all in there. All right, so let's see here. So that's a left trap. We've got both ribs that are locked up in through there. We've got scalings on both sides in there as well. Uh, Lavatter scaps on both sides too. And then of course you feel in there we've got the rhomboids, mostly left, which is kind of interesting. But you figure with that little bow that you have in there, it's not a huge surprise, right? Yeah. So come in through here, feels, feels pretty good. A um, little tighter on the left hand side and through there, so we'll mark that as well. Come in through here, see the QLs are not very happy, and it feels like it's more left in through there also. My goodness. Who knew we were going to have this kind of fun, right? And then come in through here, We've got the glute medius in through here, a little tight, feel that gristle in there? Yeah. And not as bad on that side there. You feel the difference? Yeah. Okay, got that, and goose you right here, kiddo. There's your piriformis that we were talking about. Wow, that one's like a stone. Yeah, feel that? that one's real hard. Wow, okay, so uh, your girlfriend don't need any buns of steel there, right? <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, that's bad news. All right, so let's go ahead and have you raise your right leg up high as you can backwards for me, okay? Good. And then we're going to do the other one. All right, so pretty close to being about the same in through there, so that's a win. So I'll go ahead and mark that down. In through there is not being a whole lot of wild. And then we're going to come over here and see what I've got motion-wise here. So left leg is short about a half an inch. Wow, that goes short. That's easily an inch, inch and a quarter, I'd say. So that doesn't touch. That doesn't touch either. All right. So both cases not very happy at all. So we'll go ahead and get in there and mark all of that down as well. So that's right. Wow. Not very happy parts. I've seen a whole lot worse though on TV. Now, when we bent those, yeah, I know, right? When we bent those knees, did you feel that in your quads at all? In the head. Down you, near my knee, yeah. Near your knee? Yeah. Did you feel anything um, in your low back at all though? Okay. So each one of those things means something different to us. So we uh, get in there and we write all that stuff down. So, and that's going to be thought. It's going to be mostly knee joint though, correct? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go right here and do knee. Knee on both sides, yeah? Okay. All right, now I'm going to push right in through here. Does that cause you any pain? Right, left, or in the middle? No, nothing? Okay, that's good. And negative there, negative in through there. Uh, short, short, shorter. So and then i got to write that down. Um, okay, so we're going to do a little check right in through here and just see what the SI joint's doing too for us, okay? Wow, do you feel how stuck that is? And do you feel it want to track out? Feel that? All right, so take this in here. Wow, this one's even more so. Do you feel that? It doesn't go straight back through the SI joint. Now, does that cause any pain in here? Not usually. No, nope. did it hurt just now? No. Okay, did you hear the clicking yeah. in here also? So, no pain, but just definitely locked. And we're going to say left crepitus, so write that down. Alrighty, so decrease, decrease PROM bilateral. Okay, so we've got all that stuff out of the road there for you. There's a lot of paperwork here. You see all that paperwork? <laughs> My gosh. I know you filled out a bunch, I filled out a bunch. I've got to fill out more when you leave kind of how that works. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here and see if there's an additional something in there. All right. And you feel this little grisly right there. It's not super nasty bad, but just a little bit of something there. We're going to call that taunt. I uh, think with the way these are sticking so bad, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the blocks on both sides in there, okay? Um, just to go ahead and reset the trochanters, that'll relax that, and also at the same time on the front side, decrease the, the, uh, the irritation on the hip flexors. Okay. Alrighty, so there's that, there's that. You know, it's so funny because uh, people talk about, okay, be, this being clinical, and it's like there's a lot to do when you're doing this the right way. Mm -hmm. 
Now, do you feel, this here feels pretty good, but this here, feel along that? Yeah. That's not very happy on that fibula shaft right. Come in through here, you feel these trigger points. Yeah. You don't like those. This is, it's actually worse on this side. So, but trigger points both sides. And let's just tighten both sides there too. Okay, so now first thing first, we're going to go ahead and get in there and do the adjustment. Okay. So we're going to get in there and get that all moved around there for you. So, take this right in through here. Big clunk. There it is. All right, now what we have is we have now the legs even. Let's see if it continues to be even. The legs are even. Can you see that, Kim? Mm -hmm. Dialed right in. Now, these didn't touch just a second ago. Feel that? How's that? Better. Any pain in the knees? The right hand side, just a little. Just a little bit? Yeah. But boy, that's a big change real, real fast, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, that's a winner winner for us. All right. So, now what I'm going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to give this a bump. And I actually need to come around on this side here to do this, okay? So, good chunk. There it is. And then I'm going to come over here, bump this, alrighty, and then the trigger's in here, hit this. That saves you a fortune in uh, dry needling and scraping and such, yeah. you know that? Alright, now, let's do this again. Do you feel any pressure in the knee at all now? Is that, how's that for instantaneous? <laughs> That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, utilize the blocks here to go ahead and change some of the dynamics here. Um, I'm going to start with the right one first, based upon what we have with the x-rays. Take this in through here, just like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up, so this may burn a little bit. There you go. All right. That was kind of fast, wasn't it? And this one, I'm going to go ahead and stabilize this, all righty? because I want to make sure it doesn't open back up while I go ahead and reset this one here. By adding in that little fulcrum right in there, I'm teeter-tottering the hip socket back where it needs to be, reducing the spasm, if you will, in the psoas, but also taking out all the pressure in this side here. And also at the same time, when closing this, that reduces some of the nasty in the knees, okay? So hopefully that won't come back so fast. There you go. Boom chakalaka. That's a whole lot of talking. <laughs> Feel that? Yeah. But, you know, you got to know what's going on. Wow. Do you feel the tissue difference in there? <laughs> Where's all your spasm at? Right. Can you believe that? That's so awesome. All right. Well, I got more hip stuff to do. So what we're going to do here is have you lift your hips up because they tilt. So we're going to put your hips down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring your hips back, okay? Because we know that they tilt way up in through here. All right, now I'm going to take this in here, and so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the sacrum alone here, and I'm going to push right in here, and maybe that will carry that through now that i got the SI joints opened up a little bit more. All righty, and let's see if that doesn't take that. And remember, this here goes the other way. You feel all that? Now, that's even better. It's hard to believe that the tailbone, you actually almost feel the tailbone wiggle now, can't right, you? Yeah. And we didn't break any parts off, <laughs> right? I don't think. Okay, so that's a good thing. Got you there. And as we go ahead and roll on up in there. All right, now this is the crazy mean area, right? Yeah. So I'm going to take a look at where I'm at with that. So no, no parts break off again, right? Safety first. All right. So that there is an apex curve uh, with thoracic, plus it's hyperkyphotic. And that's where you have your T4 syndrome too. So we can actually, if we're not careful, stimulate that into your arm again. And so we want to try and avoid that as best as we can. So when you go ahead and you get in there, and not too many people know this either, with this curve here, fortunately the, the, the rotation is here, but I don't want to shove into this so much as much as I want to just bring it straight down. Now that just so happens to be the side that you also have your T4 syndrome as far as the, the radiation tingle, and it's kind of actually more of a like glove sensation. Now if this here, if you hit yourself in the face of the log, you can actually feel like you've uh, stabbed yourself in the bicep, which is a really weird combo. So anyway, 
just like that. How you doing? Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Now, we're not going to turn her head this time this way because I don't want to irritate this and create that sensation again. But at the same time, I can't necessarily go ahead and blast this because that blasts it right into the curve, which makes that go bad again. So I'm going to leave her head right where it is. But having the x-rays really helps make sure that we don't get into all that nasty right in there. All right. And so we're going straight down with it. I'm not going this way at all, which is a little different for me. Okay, now we've got this in through here. You feel all that on the right side. So we know that her head ain't on straight, right? So we're going to go ahead and try and change that up. So before I even get into this zone, I'm going to go to the top here, try and change this dynamic out just a little bit, okay? So let's do nose to your right. All right, now we're just kind of prepping the area, so to speak. Clutch, okay? Slide that over there. And then we've got to derotate this just like that. Nose in the center. <clears throat> All right. How did that feel, okay? All right. Now, even the mid or the uh, the mid range in through here, not too bad. Let's go ahead and have you turn your nose to your right again. All right. This time, again, we're going to go ahead and try and get your head to slide back where it needs to go without pushing into here. So I'm going to use a few of these fingers and do more of a global maneuver, and you're going to feel that slide in your head. I'm going to hit it one more time and move this forward too. Did you feel it that time? Yeah. That was kind of weird, yeah. wasn't it? All right, so pick your head up. You just take it all the way yeah. up there. There you go. I made your, I knocked the snot out <laughs> yeah, of you, didn't I, huh? <laughs> Holy cow. You know, yeah, that's not just a, a, a something that people say. I really do it. All right. Nice job. Now, do you feel the relaxation in that? Uh -huh. Now, was there any tingling in the arms at all when I did that? Okay, then good. I did my job right. Okay, so now what we're going to do, have you raise your right leg up high as you can for me. Nice. Other one now. And let's do the first one again, double check. How does that feel? It's a little tightness in my hamstring. In the hammy? Which yeah. one? Right or left? Right, right. right in through there? Yeah. All right, so what that may mean, uh, there's a combo meal right in through there. Even though you have a double, you're still pulling funny. So let's do, let's do this. It's going to have you raise this leg up and through here, okay? A lot of times the hamstrings are pulling, it's because the trochanter isn't quite there yet. So what we're going to do, kind of a little awkward move right in through here. I'm going to take this and this, bring this clear in here like so, bring this in, okay? Try the right leg again. Yeah. Other one? Huh? You want to do the other one now? Does that feel better to you? Yeah. Is it gone? Mm -hmm. Does that make you happy? Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. <laughs> I was just making sure. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do next is, is we got all that stuff out of there. Um, let's have you get up and walk around just a little bit, okay? Let's see what that looks like. Tears in my eyes that time. I know. You cry, baby. <laughs> all righty. How is it? Good. Any pinches or pulls? Mm -mm. Feeling pretty... Uh, Pretty awesome. Yeah. To make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what. Let's uh let's do one more thing. Um, I want to go ahead and, and take a look at the shoulders. Make mm -hmm. sure that they're cleared out too. So let's have you lie on your back. You ready? Got you right there. Good. All right. So now let's take a look here. I'm gonna pull this. Don't let me do it. Okay. okay. Don't let me win. Okay. That feels pretty good. Let's try this one here. Good. Good. Okay. One more area here. I'm gonna check this in here. That feel kind of sore. That's a little not right. How's this side here? Not too bad? Not too bad. The one thing I do notice on both sides is your shoulders kind of rolling in here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop those back just a little bit, just like that. All right. We got a little trigger right in here. Did you feel that let go? All right. I know. Who knew? All right. This one here is a little different. Put your hand right here. Move that there. Relax it. I'm going to set this rib right here. Okay, a little bit more. Gotcha. So I'm going to take this in through here. No, not. Hello. All right. 
so let's test this again, okay? Hold it right there. Good. This one here? Good. Go and open your arms now. How's that feel? Good. They feel loosey goosey? Yeah. Up you go. Yeah. Woo. All right. Well, do me a favor. Tell people what it is that you, uh, what you experienced here today, will you? Really? <laughs> yeah, right? And so, what's the difference? Now, you've been to other, other places and whatnot, too, yeah. right? So, um, how does this seem like this fits into what you're doing with your like your, your natural path and that kind of thing? Is um, this kind of a win for you? Yeah, because I definitely want more of the feel that my body's taking care of itself, but obviously I need help putting it back into place. And yeah. I like being told that you're going to have to have this surgery or you're going to have to do this for X amount of days to make sure that your body's going to function properly. Mm -hmm. I love osteopathic care where I know the body's healing itself. Yeah. I'm doing the best that I can to avoid anything not natural. Mm -hmm. Now, you do know I'm a chiropractor, right? Mm -hmm. All right, good, because you said osteopathy. Yeah. They were around 20 years earlier than the chiropractors, but hey, dang it. <laughs> you came and you, you conquered. You came, you saw. It. I know, right? I did it anyway. So yeah. no, but you know what? That's the big thing is just trying to make sure that you guys are getting what you need. Now the X-rays and, and understanding your body a little bit better. Do you think that helps you with as far as decisions and what you're doing as far as your sport that you're in? Yeah, because if I know what parts of my body are affected with my strongman, I can focus on my form and technique better in that area. That right. Avoid that injury. That help you be a little bit more focused on what you're doing as opposed to your body breaking down, maybe? Yeah, what's hurting and why. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I hear you. So if uh, if there's anything that you would say to somebody, because, I mean, there's a lot of chiropractic docs. You, you drove an hour and a half to get here. Why would you do such a crazy thing when there's so many in, in the Fort Wayne area? Um, I've seen a few in Fort Wayne because obviously you are an hour and a half away, and the times that I do see you, it's usually at comps. Yeah. Um, but nothing's ever been comparative. Uh, comparable to the care I received with you both personally and bodily yeah. and effectively. So yeah. it's worth the drive. <laughs> Well, we just want people to get better. I mean, yeah. that's the big thing. And I, and I think over time, you know, it's it's neat because, you know, I mean, I, I think there's a sense that you understand that I, I want to figure this out, right? Yeah. We want to have solutions for you. And uh, you, you kind of like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen. I like knowing that the person that's caring for me wants me to get better. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? I know. It's kind of like, you know, everything right now, for the most part, for so many people is... It's disease maintenance, you know, and I think, you know, once we go ahead and we break down what's going on, then it becomes health maintenance. So health maintenance is a whole lot better than disease maintenance, right. wouldn't you agree? I don't want chronic disease, I want chronic health. Chronic health. <laughs> yeah, that's worse, isn't it? Well, listen, uh, thanks so much for coming down and yeah. taking the time, and uh, and thanks for sharing your journey with everybody else yeah. as well, because I think that's so important. For and sure. uh, is there a shout-out to anybody you want to go ahead and give? I am strong. I miss you guys. This there it is. This stuff needs to be over. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. Well, listen, if you have any questions or anything along those lines, please don't hesitate to give us a holler at inchiropractic.com. Uh, we want to do everything we can to go ahead and maximize your performance, but also at the same time try and maximize your health and get you exactly where you want to be as opposed to where you just ended up one day, okay? So if that's something you're interested in, don't hesitate to give us a call, 317-770-5775, uh, and uh, let's go ahead and get started on your journey back to health. Have a great day.